This is the JBA Trust's augmented reality sandbox. So essentially it shows how water can move through a river catchment and how the landscape affects the flows of water. So if we take a look at the sandbox, you can see that as we move the sand, the contours change in real time. So we can shape our own catchments however we like. What we can also do is introduce water and see how it flows over different features within the catchment. So you can just hold your hand over a particular part of the catchment and see how the water flows and moves over the different types of topography. So in the sandbox, you can see that the different heights of the catchment are represented by contour lines. So these are these lines that represent continuous levels of elevation. It's also colored by height as well. The contour lines in the sandbox help us understand how steep or shallow a particular part of the catchment hill is. So in this area here, the contour lines are spaced very closely together and that shows that the hill is steep. If we rain on that hill, you can see that the water moves very quickly off that hill and into the valley below. In this area, the contour lines are much further spaced and this shows that the hill slope is much shallower. And if we introduce rain to this part of the catchment, you can see that it flows off quite a lot more slowly. And in fact, some of it is staying on the hill slope for longer. You can see where those bits of blue are showing that the water is draining off a bit more slowly. In the sandbox, we can also explore where storage areas for water might exist in the catchment. For example, we could create a storage area in this part here, introduce a small dam, and then if we rain over this bit, you can see how the water collects at the lowest point of the catchment and is stopped by the dam. and we can just fill up this area of storage. If we were to release the dam, you could then see where the water flowed downstream of that storage area. So we can now use the sandbox to build two different types of catchment and explore how variations in catchments can affect flood risk. So what we've created here is two contrasting catchments. They've both got roughly the same gradient from the top of the catchment down to the bottom of the catchment. But as you can see, this one here has got a much straighter channel. It's also got very straight, steep tributaries feeding into that channel. Um, and there's a settlement that we've put at the bottom there. So those little Lego bricks are representing houses. This side of the catchment is a much more naturalised looking catchment. We've got a meandering river channel. We've got some trees planted around. We've got some woody debris in some of the channels. We've also got small little runoff attenuation features. And what we're going to do is introduce rain into both of these catchments and see how quickly the water flows down the catchment and how much is actually stored in the upland areas of the catchment. So you can see that in the straight catchment, the water's moved and it's already at the bottom of the catchment. It had quite a lot of velocity, it moved really quickly and it's flooded that settlement. In the more naturalised catchment with a meandering channel, the water is taking a lot longer to reach the bottom. And that's because the gradient of the channel is a lot shallower because it's got further to travel. We can also see that in the more naturalised catchment, there's quite a lot of water that's staying up in the catchment and is being stored by some of the little features that we talked about earlier. To reduce the risk of flooding in the settlement at the bottom of the catchment, we can build engineered flood defences. We can just represent these with just some Lego bricks here and position those in. Then if we rain on the catchment again, we can see what difference that those make. So you can see that that wall has now protected the settlement from flooding. 
As well as introducing engineered defences to reduce the risk of flooding downstream, we can also slow the flow of water in the upstream catchment areas by introducing various measures such as creating storage areas, introducing leaky dams and planting trees. So we'll just rain on this catchment again and see what difference that's made. So you can see that the woody debris and the leaky dams that we've put in the channel are slowing the flow, they're reconnecting the floodplain to the channel and we can also see that there's quite a lot of blue in the upland areas of the catchment showing that we've managed to store some water further upstream.